Hey everybody, this is Zach Rosette with BuildBox. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take the games that you create with BuildBox and test them out on your Android phone. Now, I know a lot of you have been asking about this, so I wanted to create a very clear and straightforward way to show you how to do this. Now, I'm using a Mac to do this. However, the same steps will work for Windows as well. There's a few minor tweaks, and I'll tell you what those tweaks are along the way, but let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open up BuildBox and once your game is finished and you're ready to test it out on an Android phone, I want you to go to the upper left hand corner and I want you to click on File and then hover over Export and then I want you to click on Android. Okay, at this point it's going to ask us, well what do you want to name this Android folder and where do you want to save it? I'm going to just name this CubeLand for Android and I'm going to save it on the desktop so that it's real easy for me to grab it and show it to you. Now give it a few seconds to generate this game folder because it's getting all of the code ready and generating it and getting it ready for Eclipse. So give that a few seconds. Okay, awesome. So now our game folder is generated and we're good to go. Okay, great. The next thing I want you to do is open up your favorite web browser and I want you to type into the Google search bar Java JDK download page and then hit enter a couple things will pop up and the one I want you to click on is Java SE development kit 8 hyphen downloads hyphen Oracle okay that's the one you want and then this is the section that you want to focus on over here are all the downloads but before you can click on those downloads you need to accept the license agreement so after you accept the license agreement, if you're a Mac person, I want you to click on this one right here. And if you're a Windows person, I want you to click on this bottom one right here. That's going to go ahead and start the download. Now I want you to pause the video and wait till the download is finished and then catch back up with us. Once that's done, the next thing I want you to do is go back to Google.com. And this time, in the Google search bar, I want you to type in download Eclipse for Mac. Now, if you're a Windows person, I want you to type in download Eclipse for Windows. But if you're a Mac person, just go ahead and click enter. Now, I want you to click on the top left link over here. Right here, I want you to click on Eclipse Downloads. So this is the Eclipse download page, and it should be in the same spot on both Windows and Mac. So I want you to click over here on Download 64-bit. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to click on right here, I want you to click on this download and start the download. So make sure that if you're a Mac user, it says Mac right here and if you're a Windows person it should end in .exe. So go ahead and run that download and when you're installing Eclipse, just in case you don't know which one to download, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it. The one that you want to download is this top one right here where it says Eclipse IDE for Java developers. This is the one that you want to install just in case that wasn't clear. Okay awesome, once you have Eclipse installed I'm going to have you go to Google one more time so go to google.com and this time in the Google search bar I want you to type in Eclipse ADT plugin. I want you to scroll down and I want you to click on installing the Eclipse plugin Android developers hyphen MIT okay so this is the one that you want okay and the next thing I want you to do is I want you to select this and I want you to copy it. So if you're a Mac user, just hit Command C. And if you're a Windows user, hit Control C. And we're going to paste it later, but for right now, I want you to copy it. OK? So after you've copied that, we're going to go ahead and move on. So the next thing I want you to do is go ahead and open up Eclipse now. Give it a few seconds, and it's going to ask you to select a directory as a workspace. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better. At this point, we just want to click Launch. OK. So Eclipse is going ahead and getting started. This window is going to pop open. And the next thing I want you to click is Import Existing Projects. OK. At this point, it's going to ask you to select a directory. 
as the root directory. And so I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see it a little bit better. Okay, and bring it down so you can see the whole thing. Okay, cool. So this is where we're going to make use out of that build box file that we generated earlier. So now I want you to click browse. And I saved my build box file on the desktop. So I'm just going to click on desktop and just in case, you know, the, your folder is just showing this, it's important that you bring this down and select Android as the root directory folder, okay? Do not select whatever name that you picked here. It's important that you select this one and then click open. Okay? Because if you don't do that, it's not going to work properly. Okay. So now that you've selected the correct root directory, the next thing you need to click is search for nested projects. Okay, and what that's going to do is that's going to include the Google Play Services library. And it's important that you do that because once again, if you don't do that, it's just not going to work properly. So now that you've done that, click finish in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, so it's going to go ahead and open up Eclipse. I'm going to spread this out so that it's a little bit bigger so you can see already that there's a couple errors here on the bottom all right and I'm gonna help you get rid of those errors so the first step to handling these errors is you need to go to the very top left of your screen so I'm going to take you to the top left and I want you to click help okay and then the next thing you need to click is install new software okay great so this is where we're gonna put in that link that we made a copy of alright and I'm gonna just paste that link right in there and I'm gonna click add alright here I'm just gonna press OK I'm not even gonna name it I'm just gonna press OK and then right here this is gonna pop up the developer tools and so I want you to bring this down and the only one that you actually need is the Android development tools so I want you to select Android development tools and then click next Okay, give it a few seconds. Go ahead and click next again. At this point, you want to accept the terms of the license agreement, and then you can click finish. Now, we're going to click install anyways. And then at this point, it should ask us to restart Eclipse. So let me zoom in so you can see that. Yeah, see it's asking us to restart Eclipse right now, and so go ahead and just click Restart Now. So Eclipse should restart right away, and it's going to open back up again, and it's going to ask us if we want to import an existing project again. It's going to open up that welcome window, but we've already imported our existing project, so we're going to bypass that, and I'll show you what, you, what I mean here in a second, because it's going to open up. Give it, a, give it a few more seconds. Okay, great. So here's the welcome window, and we could click import existing projects again, but we don't need to because we've already done it. Okay, so at this point, we're just going to click exit out of the welcome window, and then we're right back in our workspace. Okay, now notice that in the bottom right, it's loading up a bunch of data right here, okay, and it's, it's making the workspace work, and it's going to get rid of a bunch of errors. Okay, so you should be able to see this now that there are some errors gone. Okay, but we still have a little little ways to go before we can go ahead and test this out. So the next thing I want you to do is I want you to go here to the this folder, all right, this file, and I want you to open this up, and then I want you to double click on Project Properties. Okay, and right here right here I want you to type in okay go ahead and type this in SDK dot build tools equals 25.0.3 okay and then we're gonna click exit and it's gonna ask us to save so over here and you might be able to see it yeah so right here, you want to go ahead and just click Save Those Changes because we made some changes to the project.properties file. And so we want to save those changes. OK, great. Now, 
there is no more warnings and so we should be able to plug in our phone at this point however you might still have some warnings and you might run into some problems if you don't do this next step okay so this is important to keep following along and I'm gonna take you to the Android SDK manager now one second top left so over here you're gonna want to click on Android SDK manager okay so click on that all right wait for that to open give it a few seconds and there we go you can see it just just right so this is very important this is an important step and I think a lot of you are gonna have problems with this if you do not do this step correctly see how the 26.01 and the 26 are not installed okay you want to make sure that you delete those packages okay so if you need to delete something you just click on it and then you delete the package okay because the one that you really want is the Android SDK build tools 25.0.3 okay and that's why I also, I also included it in the project.properties file okay so make sure that that's the only one that's installed okay none of these other ones all right and you do not need to have the Android um, 8.0, the API 26 installed. It's okay to have them installed anyways, but the one that you really do need to have installed is this Android 6.0 API 23, okay? So make sure that that one is installed, okay? And then you'll be good to go and you won't run into any errors, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of the Android SDK manager. Okay, so the next step is going to be on the phone and I'm gonna show you that right now. So one second. Okay, so the next step is to set up your Android phone and get your Android phone ready for testing out your game. Okay, so the way you do this is you click menu here in the bottom left, okay? And then you're gonna click settings and then scroll down until you see the about device okay and I want you to click on about device okay and real quick just so you notice something you see right above about device it just says accessibility okay well we're gonna open up another tab that says developer options okay so this is how you do that you go to about device and you see here where it says build number you wanna click that seven times so one two three four five six seven Okay, awesome. So developer mode has been activated and you can see the little message there on the bottom. So now when we go back to settings, there it is, developer options, okay? And so that won't appear unless you hit the build number seven times, so it's important that you do that. Okay, now go to developer options and then I want you to check the box that says USB debugging and it's gonna ask you allow USD, uh, USB debugging and you click okay. Okay, awesome. So now you've got your phone ready and set up to test out your games on this phone. Okay, great. Now that you've got your phone all set up for development, I want you to go up here to the top left and select this file. And then I want you to click this little area, arrow right here on the right and it says run as. And then I want you to select Android application. Okay, so we're gonna run this as an Android application. So give that a few seconds. It's working, it's working. You can see here on the bottom right. Okay. Now it's saying no compatible targets were found. Do you wish to add a new Android vir virtual device? And we're gonna say no. Okay, great, so now it's asking us, so if you don't wanna use a virtual Android device, what do you wanna run it on? And so this is where we plug in our phone and I'm gonna show you that right now. Okay, so this is where we plug in our phone and watch when I plug it in, how it responds on the computer. Okay, so I plug it in, boom, right there, easy. And then it asks us, well, do you wanna give this computer permission to run this app? And so I'm gonna say, okay. And then you'll notice it turns green here. There's a little green check mark right here in the center. And now we're good to go. So we're just gonna press okay. Okay, so it's going to run our app, just give it just a few seconds, and it's going to load up our game, and we should be good to go. It's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to move the phone in real close so you can see it, but you can see that Cubeland went ahead and started up. 
So you can play your game now and test it out on your Android phone and it's pretty awesome. And you can unplug your phone and access the game anytime you want right there in your apps. It's got the little gray icon. Yours might not be gray because if you put an actual icon into the game file it will show up here. I just didn't make one so that's why it's gray. But you can play the game anytime you like and test it out. It's awesome. So thank you so much for watching the tutorial. If you have any feedback or comments please leave them down below. I really really appreciate it and yeah. Thanks everybody.